Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you have a wonderful day. In today's video, I'm going to go through five different companies that are in the technology sector. As you know, technology sector has been down quite a bit since basically 20, beginning of 2022. And rightly so, because they were very much overvalued. Right now, some of them are coming back down to, you know, undervalued territory or fair valued and so on. So maybe this is a good time to look at. And again, if one of the things that we always talk about here is you, no one knows what might happen tomorrow. But the sentiment, especially in the US, is looks like they've now almost admitting that they're in a recession. And if that happens, some of these companies might continue going down. So there are risks, obviously, associated with this. So you're going to have to be careful when you, if you're looking into these type of companies. But if you're a long-term investor, you're looking about five years minimum or more, Okay, then you don't have to worry about what might happen. And I will show you in a, you know, towards the end of the video, all five companies, the total return from these five companies in the last five years and 10 years. And you can see, and the S&P 500, and you can see basically the trend if you like. Okay, because remember, in the end of the day, like I've always said to you guys, I'm a long term investor. Everything that I'm doing here is just to buy and hold for good quality companies. Okay. And I will go through with some of these things in a second, the, some of the things we're looking for. Now, one other thing is some of the companies we're going to talk about today are down um, because they are in the semiconductor companies and so on. So what I want to show you right now, I found this article in the uh, Morningstar and they've talked about why semiconductor stocks basically getting crashed um, basically since the beginning of 2022. They talked about a couple of individual stocks, but what I was really interested, the two things I want to show you here is this bit here. So you, see, you can see they underperformed to the US overall market. So the blue line is the semiconductor stocks. And when you go back, when you go down here, you will see it talks about the US restrictions my hurt revenue. And it actually will hurt in the long run because the US decided they cannot sell the, basically the US companies decided, or the government decided, none of the US companies will sell um, chips basically to China. And when you look at this revenue, uh, where it comes, so chi basically China revenue exposure to these semiconductor companies, look at this list of companies and look at Qualcomm, one of the companies that I own in my portfolio, then Texas Instrument, Broadcom, Applied Materials. None of these companies are not allowed, basically are allowed to sell um, their chips to the US, basically to China. And some of these chips that they used to sell was the, some of the most profitable um, product that they had in their product line. So that's definitely going to hurt in the long run. And that's one of the reasons that these stocks are down. The second reason is the near term outlook when it comes to semiconductors, especially because of recession. People are worried about recession. What this means is these companies produce products that go into innovative things that basically we use on a daily basis. But then who's going to buy an Apple phone for, I don't know, 3,000 um, pounds because some of these companies have, do have chips that are going to Apple phones, for example, like Broadcom and Qualcomm. No one is going to buy that product because they're more worried about their feeding their own family. And so for that reason, there will be slowdown in the economy. And for that reason, consumer spending will actually basically um, almost stop, if you like, especially for these type of products that these companies um, create. So for those two reasons, they are down quite a bit and the outlook for the next five to ten years, five, well, at least the next two years is actually quite low, especially for the analysts that basically are expecting these companies to um, total returns basically is almost non-existent. OK, so let's have a look at the companies anyway. I want to go through very quickly. I'm not going to read every single thing. I'm just going to give you an overview of the five companies. And the first one is Qualcomm. Like we, you've seen it now. Is basically works in the 3, uh, 3G, 4G, 5G um, company. They are leading company when it comes to 5G. Um, right now, they're trading $120 per share. They have EPS of $11 and market cap of $135 billion. They have a very narrow um, economic model, I'll be honest with you, because some of their products is actually um, goes into companies like um, Apple phones and so on. Um, although they've now recently came out and they're working with uh, Samsung, so you have to be careful with these type of companies because if 20% or 30% of their revenue comes from one single company and that company is Apple who has so much money and can easily say, you know what, we no longer need you. And that's exactly what they've done to Broadcom recently. So 20% of their um, Broadcom's revenue comes from selling uh, products to Apple and they have now decided, I think 2025 onwards, they're going to create their own. So you have to be careful. 
beta is not quite where I would like to be, especially for Broadcom. Um, when it comes to EPS um, or P, uh, sorry, P ratio is actually quite low. Forward PE is actually seems even uh, lower. Well, P, current PE is actually lower, trading PE if you like. And price to free cash flow is actually, we're looking about 20. When you look at the sector right now, 26.28, that's the technology sector. And when you compare to this, this actually means it's quite cheap. In terms of dividends, actually quite nice. I would have liked this growth to be about 5% or more, but it is quite good. And you get $5 for every share that of this company you own. They, it is safe and yet they have a quite bit of money in terms of uh, free cash flow, which means they can use that money to actually pay off dividends and so on, reinvest in the company and so on. Profit margins in terms of profitability is actually very, very good position. And the last 10 years, they've returned about 8%. Current ratio is above one. So in terms of debt levels, you, we're not worried about that. And then going forward next year, they're expecting about 19% growth. But then after that, about 7% because of decline. I will show you what Seeking Alpha also says about this company in a second. Um, and in terms of valuations, we're looking at the um, Simply Wall Street. is actually saying about 15% undervalued. Uh, Morningstar almost is the same. Okay, 20% and uh, 15%. 14%, sorry, and about 18% when it comes to tip rank and 25% when it comes to um, seeking alpha. So all of them agree and it is a buy at the moment. When it comes to Sharia compliance side of things, okay, it looks like it's absolutely fine. Um, one of the brothers asked me recently, I haven't answered his, his question yet, but I read very quickly and he said, some, how do we actually find the companies? Because if you're new to the investing in the stock market, how do we find companies that are not going to go Sharia compliant in and out? especially because of the debt levels and so on. To be honest with you, it is quite difficult to do that, brother. And one of the things I will say, though, is technology companies, especially the you know, like companies like this and Microsoft and so on, they have a very low debt. So for that reason, you you wouldn't end up getting basically into like a non-share compliance and so on. I think the question was slightly longer, but I will answer the rest of that, inshallah, another time. But there you have it. That's Qualcomm. So let's now have a quick look in terms of revenue growth. So it has been growing basically every single year. There should be about a little bit of decline expected and then it will should bounce back. And in terms of EPS, you can see they have actually beaten their revenue every single year in the last five years, which last quarter, sorry. And annually, when we look at it, you can also see they have actually beaten this year, even basically last year, they have actually beaten. And obviously there should be a decline according to the analyst and then it will bounce back after that. In terms of um, ratings, so when we go to ratings here, I'll quickly show you what, according to Wall Street, basically, it is a buy from them, okay? And then, yes, you've seen it already, about 25% upside from where it is right now. Next company is another semiconductor company, KLA, and the, but this company is actually, um, they don't actually do the chips themselves. They are, they deal with the manufacturing process side, side of things, process uh, monitoring, diagno uh, diagnosis, and control systems. Um, and they're currently trading $417 per share. When I saw this, I was actually quite surprised because I sold it, I think, when it was about 340s because at the time I had too much exposure to just the technology side of things and I had too many t um, um, semiconductor companies, so I sold it. But it's actually gone up quite a lot. As you can see, P and EPS is actually quite nice. It's almost a $60 billion market cap. It has wide economic mode. Beta is quite high, but when you look at the PE, forward PE and trailing PE, as well as price to free cash flow, is actually quite nice. You, you'll see, you'll think it's actually quite very, very cheap, according to basically in comparison to relative to the um, overall market. Dividend wise, it's 1%. They have it been increasing. They will pay you about five dollars for every share that you, this company you own. They actually are quite safe, and they have a nice um, three point, basically three point one billion dollars of free cash flow to pay that off. And the payout ratio is very, very low, which is quite nice. In terms of profitability side of things, is actually great. In terms of the last the return of the last ten years, about twenty five percent, and current ratio is absolutely brilliant. When you look at this, you're like, why do you, on earth have you sold this company? Honestly, I sold it because I wanted to make sure that my portfolio wasn't too volatile at the time. It was when the market was very, very volatile. Well, it still, still is. But yeah, um, next year, they're expecting about 25% decline in terms of revenue. And then 5% growth after that um, is overvalued according to Simply Wall Street, fairly valued according to Morningstar. 
and then undervalued, overvalued, sorry, according to tip rank, and then overvalued according to seeking alpha. So majority of these companies are saying um, is overvalued. Now, this is really important, okay? Because this is overvalued, I am not saying go away and buy this. I'm bringing this to your attention to just to kind of say, okay, you know what? It looks quality company. Let me do more re research and add it to my watch list if you're interested and then have your price range, okay? One of the things I actually forgot to do at the beginning is this thing here, the key attributes that I normally look for. So earnings are growing, revenue is growing, profit margins, return on equity, and they have a strong free cash flow. They have a fairly valued, so with margin of safety, with margin of safety. Not only are they undervalued, you also have your margin of safety. Every time we talk about watch list, I talk about margin of safety. Normally, basically 10% or more for technology companies because of that high um, beta. Strong free cash, basically strong balance sheet, so low debt, clear competitive advantage. If they have a wide economic mode, normally it's quite good. And dividend yield, five year growth rate of, about, of over 6%. And then total return, that's actually above 10%, 15% if you like. So that's what we're looking for. So when you see a company like this and you basically meet the, that meets this type of criteria, then obviously then you're not gonna have to do a bit more research, add it to your watch list. Don't buy it straight away. Um, that's not what I'm saying here, but add it to your watch list, okay? I hope that I made myself clear because someone asked me the other day, why am I recommending basically overvalued stocks? Well, I'm just bringing it to your attention. If you're interested to do more research, add it to your watch list and wait it, you know, for your price uh, range, inshallah. So 100% in terms of um, activity, business sites, things, 15% interest bearing debt, and then almost 7% in terms of um, interest bearing securities. Right, the next one is Microsoft. There's no surprise. I love this company. I basically own a lot of their products. I use it all the time. Currently trading $239 per share. EPS is actually quite nice. $1.78 trillion. Uh, it has wide economic mode. Beta is quite low. In terms of valuation, it seems expensive when you look at this, especially in comparison to the overall markets. And then when you look at the dividend yield, it's absolutely beautiful. Although it's increasing every single year, it's quite low at the moment, but they have increased that for 12 years in a row. You'll get $2.72 for every share that you own. Safety is perfect, perfect to 99%, $63 billion of free cash flow. Hopefully they can use some of that when they buy Activision Blizzard and don't get into more debt if you like. Profit margins side of things is absolutely beautiful. Operating margins good. Return on equity is excellent. Total return 25% in the last 10 years. It has a bait, uh, current ratio above one. And expectations for next year 16%, then 5, 13% every year, next five years, for the following five years. And then fairly valued. Okay, I could, well, discounted right now by 6% according to um, Simply Wall Street, according to Morningstar, 25% discounted. According to tip rank, almost 20% discounted right now. And then according to Seeking Alpha is also a 23 and it's a strong buy from Seeking Alpha. So when you look at this, everyone is saying it's actually a buy. And because of this growth side of it, because the fact of being Microsoft and the acquiring a lot of other businesses, that's one of the reasons, okay? Now it comes down to this business activity side of it. 93, so according to Zoya, they are saying about 93%. I completely disagree because they said 5% is questionable. That's quite high because that the only bit, it might grow in the next few years, but the advertisement money that comes from basically Bing is not worth about 5% of the overall business. I don't think so. A company that is this big and that returns quite a lot of money every single year, that is not the case. I've done it before, I looked at it, I'm comfortable. If you're interested, look at it again, okay? But they have put it down quite 5% question mark and the 90% absolutely fine. And then obviously the two, the other 2%, I can't remember what they were, like, like a little bit percentages here and there, right? Um, so interest bearing debt is absolutely fine and interest bearing security is absolutely fine as well. Like I said, I am comfortable, but you're gonna have to do your own research. Right, now looking at in terms of revenue, and then basically you can see last five years and the next two years is actually beautifully growing. So from where we are now, which is $198 billion of revenue in 2022, 2023 we expect 112 and then 2024 um, we expecting 240 billion dollars so that is quite nicely growing and that's probably why people are paying a lot of money eps is also heading the right direction so there's absolutely no concern from this side or business side of it in, in my opinion 
Right, so the next company we're looking at is Accenture. Accenture is one of the leading global IT service firm that provides consulting, for example, strategies and technology and operating services for other companies. Okay, they work with a lot of basically the, some of the biggest companies out there in the world in terms of this basically consulting and strategy and technology side of things. Right now, $285 per share. EPS is really nice. $178 billion market cap. It has wide economic mode. Beta is quite high, if you ask me. And um, PE, when you look at PE, current PE and forward PE is actually quite high. Price to free cash flow is low. And dividend side of it is 1.57. And it has increased the dividend. It basically increased it for in last time 15%. Five years. 10% and then so on. You you will get $4.48 for every share of this company that you own. Right now, they have increased that dividend for 17 years in a row. 38% in terms of payout ratio, which is very, very low. And they have almost $9 billion of free cash flow. Profitability is actually decent. Okay, profit margin is about 11%, 15% of operating margins. Return on equity, we're looking at about 32%. And total return last 10 years, about with 16%. They have enough money to cover their current as assets and so on, current li um, liabilities, if you like, or they've got enough liquid, basically, um, the enough assets to liquidate in the next 12 months. So next is the next year is basically expected to grow about 9% in terms of earnings and then 5, 10% for the next five years. In terms of um, simply Wall Street, they're actually, actually saying it's about 3% overvalued. Morningstar is saying fairly valued. Tip rank is actually saying about 4% upside and then seeking alpha about 9%. So again, it's one of those companies you probably might be interested in and you will put that on your watch list. It is definitely on my watch list, okay? With, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was 260, 260, I think it was, or no. So 260, 270s where my price uh, was. Um, but again, if it comes back down to that range, then it will be perfect. If not, you know what? I'm not going to lose sleep over because i do own some other technology companies there right so 100 percent in terms of business side of it 1.7 and 3.12 in terms of their overall um interspering securities right so we've got one more to go but before we do that you know what i'm gonna ask you please give the video a like that because that is definitely gonna help if you haven't done it already and subscribe to the channel so when it comes to the revenue side of it you can see things are absolutely growing beautifully and when it comes to if we take the estimates out you can see the actuals is actually quite nice and the estimates is also heading the right directions okay so yeah that's the fourth company so the last one is cisco another company that i own in my portfolio this is one of the best companies out there when it comes to um, networking side of things and recently they got into this basically cyber security side of things and they have things like the cyber security software like firewalls and so on and they are probably the company of choice when it comes to networking i've not worked in any of company any of the my previous companies or the, the one i work for now when you look at the networking devices they have it's run by basically by cisco and now because they're moving from normally just buying the packet um the software not the software buying the equipment and then just that's it now they're actually doing software as a service which is absolutely amazing or a SaaS model if you like currently trading 48 dollars per share i wish that it can come down to 45s because i want to buy more of this company it has 201 billion dollar market cap wide economic mode beta is quite low p is actually quite low in relative to this um, general markets and p uh, in terms of dividends is really good three percent 3% increase last year, 5% in the last five years. And then you get about five, $1.52, okay? 11 years of increasing that dividend. They've got $13 billion market cap, um, sorry, um, free cash flow. And dividend safety is 91%, which is absolutely amazing. In terms of profitability, it's absolutely amazing. No issues there. Total return in the last 10 years, we're looking at about 11%. And going forward, so in terms of um, next five years, we're expecting... 6% uh, next year and then 8% next five years. Undervalued according to um, Simply Wall Street. Undervalued according to Morningstar. Undervalued according to Tiburang. And undervalued according to Seeking Alpha. And it's a buy from Seeking Alpha. So again, another great company. I like this company. I own it in my portfolio. We use it a lot in my company. So one of, that's one of the reasons I actually bought more of recently. 99% in terms of business activity side of things. 5% and then 10% almost 11% if you look at interest bearing security side of things.
and finally in terms of revenue growth expectation and what has happened so far so as you can see every year they were doing really well 2020 it went down a bit and then it picked up again and you can see it's actually heading the right direction is from right now where it is was 51.5 to 56.7 billion dollars um, of revenue expected in 2024 in terms of eps it's almost the same and then when you add the estimates you can see they've beaten in the estimates um, every single year and hopefully we'll continue to do that going forward the final thing i want to show you about this company is actually dividend growth as well okay all of these companies have got similar sort of graphs when you look at their dividends okay from 2012 to right now where they are they have been growing that dividend which is absolutely beautiful finally finally i promise this is the final thing i want to show you total return for all the companies and then the against the sp 500 so this line the orange line is actually qualcomm okay and as you can see um, when you look at qualcomm it's actually not done as has it has beaten the market but it actually hasn't beaten so in terms so we're looking at five years by the way so total return for this company and that includes price, price appreciation as well as the um, dividends that received right 103 percent the s p 500 return about 55 percent asn or essential return 91 total uh, total returns 182 percent for microsoft 35 for cisco and 298 for basic kla so these companies especially the these four companies apart from cisco are absolutely huge had a huge growth in the last basically five years and they have be, been basically have beaten the S&P 500 basically last five years. So if obviously we can't just rely on the past, but if it continues to, you know, similar sort of a trend, then you like I've always said to you guys, you have to think as a long term investor. And if you look in five years, imagine you bought basically one of these companies, Microsoft, for example, and five years down the line, you, your total return is 182 percent. That's absolutely huge. Even look at KLA, 200 and nine, whatever it is. That is massive. Okay, that's absolutely massive. So what we need to do as investors, we need to stop thinking about what might happen tomorrow and start thinking about what might happen in five years, 10 years, buy quality companies and hold them for a very, very long time. Sorry for making this video a slightly longer, but I just wanted to give you some quality businesses, hopefully that you can look into and do more research of. It's not a stock recommendation, but I just want you to look at them and see if you can do a little bit more due diligence before you actually put in them in your portfolio, if that's what you decide to do. Have a wonderful day. Assalamu alaikum.